Welcome to um, our next video on uh, Unity 3D C Sharp AI. This is video two, and it's going to be on the if. So what we're going to look at is the power of uh, the if statement, and it's really the backbone of AI, artificial intelligence for games. It's so simple that it uh, it's it's almost silly, and you wonder, well, why should I even know about it? Well, a lot of people really don't understand how the if statement works. They think they do, and hopefully if you go through this, this will uh, be of uh, some help. So I'm going to start a, a C-sharp script here, and we're going to call it my, my, uh, my if. So this is going to be for my if statement here, okay. So I go, I've got my if, all right. And I'm going to go ahead and open it in uh, mono development. It's coming up here. Okay, there it is. Welcome. And it'll say um, my if. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to write a very simple if statement. And it's going to be so simple, you're going to say, why are we even wasting our time with that? I'm going to put if, which is a key word in C sharp, as it is in many other languages. If true, um, if this is true, then I want you to print. Um, this is true. Sounds silly. Now, let's just try this and see if it works. And, of course, I need a semicolon at the end of the statement. And if it does work, come back and explain it. And if it doesn't work, I'll have to come back and fix it. Okay, so I'm going to save it. I'm just going to minimize this. Then we're going to look over here, right here, and try it. And it says, um, oh, why doesn't it work? Well, it's because I didn't attach it to anything. So let me attach it to the main camera. Okay, we've got to remember to do that. Come here and look at the main camera. And let's see if my if is down here. Um, yeah, there it is right there. There's my script. Okay, let's try it now. Okay. And it says, this is true, as we would expect. Okay, let's have a look at uh, what's happening here. What I've got is I've got a reserved word called if, which is this guy right here. I have another reserved, uh, reserved word called true, lowercase, and true is a uh, condition. It's either true means something is true, and the, other, the opposite of it is false. And, and uh, it's what's called a Boolean operator. Boolean means uh, it's named after a guy by the name of George Bull who used on-off logic to try and prove everything. Let's put false, F-A-L-S-E. If false, this is true. Well, I shouldn't get anything now, right? Because it says it's false. All right, so let's go ahead and do this and minimize this and then come back here and see that I don't get, bang, I don't get anything on the output. I do get some kind of warning, but that's no big deal. Okay, so I come back here now, and normally the way we see an if statement, notice that there's no semicolon here because an if statement expects at least one other statement on the line. This is actually the complete if statement right here. It's not just the if and then a condition. What it really is, it's the if, a condition, and then what's going to, be, what's going to happen if that condition is true. Normally, the way you see the if statement written is you see it this way. You see this on a separate line. And that's cool, but the problem is what happens when a lot of new programmers see that, they want to put a semicolon right here. And that will get you an error. It's already showing the error because you're putting a semicolon in, in the middle of a, uh, of a statement. The uh, C Sharp compiler allows you to put a, a new line character in here so you can have it on a separate line. But keep in mind that the if statement requires one uh, statement that's going to be executed or not executed depending upon this condition. Now, there's another part that goes along with the, uh, with the if statement, and um, that is the else, okay? I go else, and I can put here print, 
Uh, so if it's not true, it's got to be false, right? Okay. And let's see. The, the, oh, I got to put in um, the uh, these guys. This is false. L L. Come on, S E, and a period, and that. Okay. So here's what's happening here. If this is false, it's not going to ha nothing's going to happen here. If nothing's going to happen here, then make something happen here. Else print this is false. Okay. So let's try it. And I'm going to come here. I'm going to minimize this. I'm going to go ahead and try it. And now what I see is, oh, I got to try it. What do I have? An error. The reference script on this behavior is missing. I thought I had it on here. What I do? Take it off? Okay, let's try it right here. Okay, there it is. I did it again. And now let's try it. What, what's missing here? What is missing? It's right there. Oh, I forgot a semicolon. That's what it was. Semicolon go right here. Boy, that didn't make sense, did it? That error message? I should have picked up the error here. Okay, let's try this. i watch this pesky semicolon. And then we'll minimize this guy. Let's try it again. Okay. Okay, this is false. This is false. All right, cool. We finally got it to work. All right, so let's see let's see what's going on here and why I had an error to begin with. What this is is that notice that the else has a command, so this is the whole else right here. It's the whole it's the whole bang it's the whole shebang and shaboodle. It's just like all of this is the if statement up at the top. All of this is the else statement right here. However, the way it's normally seen when it's programmed, it's seen this way, just like the if is. It's normally seen down like that. Okay. Let's put a space in there. So uh, beginners, again, want to put a semicolon after the else, but you can't do that. And, of course, you can't mess up like I did. you got to make sure you put a semicolon here. So what, what's going to happen is that if I put a true in here, this will now be printed, and the else will not be executed at all. With a false here, this will not be done, and with the else, then this will be done. Now, let's just see if this works. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to put a, um, a true here. Okay. And then save it. Minimize it. What do you think will happen now? What do you think it's going to do? Let's try it. It says, unreliable code Unreachable code detected on line 12. What's going on here? Here's line 12. If true, print this is true, else print this is false. Hmm. Does it need that? Hmm. Okay, now it prints this is true. This is true. Apparently, I, I, had, I put too many spaces in there. So it does get fussy. All right, the other thing that I want to point out is that what the bang operator is. The bang operator means not. And what it is is the explanation mark. So what I'm going to put here is if not true. Okay, this, so this will not be true now because the bang operator, the explanation mark, means not. So let's make sure I don't mess up here. Okay. So what I'm going to do come back here and do execute it and it says this is false. Okay. This is false. That's it should. Okay. Right, I'm going to come back here now. And now uh, there's a let's look at the data type that's called a Boolean data type. A Boolean data type has two conditions. And I'm going to call it uh, my uh, my my data, okay? Which I haven't defined yet, so I'm going to define it up here. Okay? It's going to be of data type 
bool, B-O-O-L. Remember we had this in, in the last lesson? And it's going to be my data. Okay, and we're going to initially start it off as being uh, true. Okay. So now, what I've got here is I put the true-false condition into a variable, just like I can put an integer into a variable or I can put a string into a variable. This is a new data type, bool for boolean. It has two conditions, true or false. That's it, all lowercase. So now, since I set my data to true, this should now print, this is true, and let's see if it does, okay? I'm gonna come here, and let's give it a shot. And there it is. This is true, right here, okay? And if you recall, this is, this is what we were doing in the previous tutorial. Uh, we had a Boolean operator that was either true or false. I could also do this. I could put the bang operator here and like that and now make that false. And of course you know what that would be. Or I can come up here and change the condition of my data. I could now make it false and it would appear false throughout the rest of the, the uh, function here. So now with this false, this will say this is false, okay? Let's, <coughs> let's minimize that. Okay, come on, this is false. All right. Now, one other important point of the, um, of the if statement along with the else is that supposing I want to execute more than one line of code if something is true or false. Supposing, for example, if this is true, I want more than one uh, uh, print statement. What I have to do now is I have to use the little squiggly things like this, okay? And let's put another print statement in here. Um, let's, let me backspace this. Uh, print, okay, and then I'm going to put uh, uh, more stuff. And then what I have to do is I have to come out here, and when I do that, <coughs> I need to put the other squiggly thing to close it. Okay. Where is it on the keyboard? Oh, here it is. I don't know why they use the squiggly things. But anyway, so now what will happen is that if this my data is true, every statement between the open squiggly and the closing squiggly will be executed. So this is if I have more than one statement. The same thing would be true down here for the else. If I have more than one statement that needs to be executed for the else. Wait, it's a squiggly thing. <coughs> Which is this right here. And I'll, ju I'll just copy and paste this part here. Okay, come on. Right. Control C. And uh, enter here. Over here. Control V more stuff and then I'll put here let me backspace here I'll put the closing squiggly thing for for this guy and where's the closing squiggly thing there he is okay so now what I have is I have a complete if else statement and I have the opening squigglies and closing squigglies because I have more more than one statement that needs to be executed what I can do up here is that I can have a Boolean variable which will have two conditions and these conditions can be executed um, using the if statement and the else. Now with this, with this as the beginning, we can do some very powerful uh, artificial intelligence. So if we understand what we did in this lesson, uh, this is really a good thing to get in that direction. Okay, that's it for this uh, video. Thank you for watching.